This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup Show from Aperoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aperoa. Search today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. In last week's show, I told you all about the Volvo EX30, Volvo's smallest electric vehicle to date. And with a low starting price of around 35,000 US dollars, we think it's got a good rosy future ahead of it. But what we didn't know until this week was that at the reveal event, Volvo committed to making its entire vehicle lineup completely electric by 2030, meaning that there's just a few years left before Volvo effectively becomes an all electric automaker. Of course, we've heard automakers commit to going electric before plenty of times, but there's usually a caveat or catch to allow them to continue to sell gasoline vehicles in markets where zero emission mandates aren't a thing. What makes Volvo's statement different, however, is the confirmation that this will be a global transition. It's good to see Volvo's commitment and here's hoping other automakers follow suit. Volvo might be working to be greener, but one company is doing the exact opposite. Shell, whose CEO has reneged on climate change goals set by his predecessor. On Wednesday this week, Shell's CEO Wahil Sawan, who took over from his predecessor in September last year, confirmed that Shell will now keep oil production stable through 2030, a departure from the commitment of the previous CEO to cut oil production output every year by a few percentage points, with a goal of achieving net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Shell is now arguing its former CEO did not commit to cutting oil production, but with $40 billion earmarked for oil and gas production through 2035 and only 10 to $15 billion earmarked for low carbon products, the sound you're hearing is the sound of everyone's future being sacrificed at the altar of short term profits. Tesla may have begun limited volume production of its semi at the tail end of last year, but a question the industry has wanted an answer to for some time is when that production will ramp up. Some in the industry have hoped that Tesla would ramp up semi-production this year, given that Tesla CEO Elon Musk has previously said that it would ramp up to 50,000 units per year by 2024. This week, though, he added some clarity to that, noting that Tesla doesn't expect to be able to produce the semi in large volumes until the end of next year, which is quite a departure from Elon Musk of a few years ago, who said back in June 2020 that it was, quote, time to go go all out and bring the Tesla Semi to volume production, end quote. The reason given for this continued delay? Battery supply constraints. Green NCAP, the emissions and carbon footprint rating sibling to Euro NCAP, has given the ID5 Pro Performance an average score of 96% and 5 green stars. Green NCAP tests the efficiency and range of vehicles in a variety of different simulated environments and calculates an overall life cycle assessment for the same. It presents data in an easy to read format for consumers to reference. The ID5 scored full marks for its Clean Air Index, 9.4 out of 10 for energy efficiency and 9.6 for greenhouse gases it's responsible for. A worst case 250 kilometres, 155 miles range was recorded in simulated extreme cold. But Green NCAP says 480 kilometres, 298 miles is a good expected range in, quote, moderate ambient conditions, end quote. Toyota held a lengthy technical briefing this week at its headquarters in Japan, where it laid out its plans for several new technologies that it says will help it on its journey, quote, beyond zero, end quote. During the event, there were many individual briefings covering everything from hydrogen fuel cell technology to single part giga casting for reduced vehicle weight and even aerodynamic drag reduction. But the one thing that caught our eye the most, however, was the presentation in which Toyota said it's discovered a breakthrough in solid state technology that will pave the way for future electric models from the brand capable of more than 900 miles, just shy of 1500 kilometers on a single charge. 
But before you get too excited, it's worth noting this promised battery isn't coming to market soon, nor is it considered next generation tech. We're actually talking a few generations up the pipeline. Sorry. How safe are semi-autonomous driver assistance features? Advocates have argued that reduced driver fatigue from their use can reduce accident rates, but an analysis of NHTSA incident data suggests the opposite. Gathering data from crashes involving Tesla's autopilot and FSD semi-autonomous systems, the Washington Post identified 736 crashes, of which 17 were fatal and 11 of those fatal incidents were in the past year alone. The article suggests that the removal of radar may be in part to blame, but doesn't include the accident rate per mile driven, which is important to determine relative safety against an unassisted human driver. It may also just be a reflection of the increased number of drivers using autopilot and FSD. So we'll keep you updated as the story develops. If you're an electric vehicle owner who has ever had to make a long distance trip, the chances are you've tried out route planning with a better route planner. Not only is it one of the best automaker agnostic route planning systems out there, but continual development over the years has added the ability to factor in your vehicle's real-time energy consumption, as well as changing weather and traffic patterns to give you the very best route choices and charging stops on your journey. To date, it's been completely independent operated by a small development team of around 10 people. But this week, we heard via Electrek that the company is about to be acquired by Rivian for an undisclosed amount of money. If you're worried about losing ABRP as your route planner of choice, don't worry just yet. Rivian reportedly has no plans to drop support for other vehicles from the app. We've finally started to see electric vehicle prices dropping around the world, with Kelly Blue Book confirming this week that average prices paid for EVs are 14% lower than they were this time last year. But a new poll from Ipsos shows that after years of steady growth in consumer interest into electric vehicles, there's now a backslide, with its latest Navigator study showing a drop across the board in the number of respondents saying they're considering an EV as their next car. The largest change occurs among millennials and younger, with 7% fewer people showing interest in EVs this year than this time last. The reasons given for the drop in interest? Growing fears about EV battery life, charger anxiety and range anxiety, followed by concerns about vehicle affordability. If you've purchased a Chevrolet Bolt EV that was made before 2020, the chances are you've known about the ongoing battery recall program for the same. The recall aims to replace battery packs in affected cars that might have a manufacturing defect that it can increase the risk of a battery fire caused by an internal short. And to date, Plenty of bolts, including the ones I've personally owned, have received new battery packs under the recall program. Under that program, GM prioritised battery replacements according to perceived fire risk, with 2020 through 2022 bolts left until last. This week, though, GM informed owners of those model year cars that they will no longer be replacing the battery as a matter of course and instead will apply software updates to affected vehicles to monitor the packs, only replacing batteries when the software deems it necessary. While this doesn't affect any Kiwi customers because the Chevrolet Bolt EV was never sold in Aotearoa, this behaviour may spread to other automakers whose cars were sold on the Kiwi market. So we suggest that we'll be keeping an ear out for further developments in case it spreads. Our final two stories are next, but first a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car? If you are and you live in Altera, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can use, and of course, how to get charging at home. So follow the link below and start that journey today. There's something of a size problem in the auto industry, especially in the US, where every new model coming to market is massive. And that's 
nowhere more apparent than in the electric pickup world, where trucks like the F-150 Lightning, Hummer EV and Tesla Cybertruck all completely eclipse pickup trucks of days gone by. And I'm saying this as someone who owns a massive Ford F-150 Lightning and uses it as a work truck rather than as a trophy truck. But this week we saw a refreshing change in the form of a new promised electric pickup from startup Tilo. Its first vehicle, the Tilo Urban Adventure Vehicle, promises the utility of a Toyota Tacoma in the size of a Mini. And while we're only seeing renderings thus far, we're certainly intrigued. Despite its diminutive size, it makes clever use of a flexible cab rear, promising more cargo capabilities than you might think. So watch this space for more info as we have it. And finally, it is no secret that former Toyota CEO Akio Toyoda was not a fan of electric vehicles and during his time at the helm of the company, he seemingly went out of his way to dismiss plug-ins in favour of hydrogen fuel cell and hybrid drivetrains. Earlier this year, he was ousted in his position as CEO but retained his position on the board of directors. Now, shareholders at the company's annual meeting have been putting pressure on him to be replaced, with calls for Toyota to begin a new chapter and go electric. Shareholders of Toyota, which include the New York City Comptroller's Office and California Public Employees Retirement System, not to mention pension funds in Europe, say they plan on voting against Toyota remaining on the board. We'll keep you posted as the vote takes place, as it will be kind of interesting to see just what happens next. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, I do want to make sure that you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it is time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch, and in doing so, you'll help wean the nation off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep Aotearoa beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back this time next week for another roundup show, but in the meantime, don't forget to check out the latest videos from Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge on this channel. I know it's a week old, but if you haven't checked out Gav's video on a really great charging station from Kiwi firm EV Nex that's smart and good looking, it's time you did. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.